What is happening, people of the world? Welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey and Wade Show with me, your host, Tommy Mack. And me, your batter host, Terry McKenna. And he's already know we're in partnership with the Garrick Bar in Belfast City Centre. A lot of people have emailed me this week. Screenshots of uh, the Irish coffees. All loving it. Unreal. Rave reviews. I'm actually going it's there. the best in the world. With McCullough today. Should be it's fun. A, it's a Christmas jumper night out. I went last yep. night. So, what? I went last night. It's Did great. he? It was oh. great. I actually seen your food. Uh-huh. It was great. So, for people who don't realise who's there, if you don't, aren't familiar with the face, this man here is a very special guest. A close personal friend of both me and Torrance. Former Irish... Multiple Irish elite champion. Former European bronze medalist. Was at the Commonwealth Games. Former WBO European champion as a professional. Only with my you know, one one loss on the record. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I'm um, saying we'll give is. Mo Farah a run for his money <laughs> in the Olympics. The greatest runner in Irish sport. Yeah, it's terrible. That's not even a friggin' joke. That is the real facts. The Thames are on. We'll get into it throughout the podcast, anyway. But everyone, welcome to the show. Wet chocolate, Tom McCall. Thanks, lads. Yeah. Be- better late than ever, I suppose. <laughs> uh, listen, we've been trying to get you on the show for about, I don't know, it's, since we started. <laughs> you were yeah, one, of our, in, one of the first guests. In fairness, everyone keeps saying, hey, when are you going on the whiskey and white? When are you going on the whiskey and white? But we well, haven't camped and me just knocking out a kid. It's, yeah. it's been difficult. Sorry. And making making all sorts of noise, jingling out there, but uh, <laughs> but um, where I'm gonna bring it back to when we first started, yeah, moving. Exactly. Always so you know what, you know what always happens, and it's a, it's a running trait. I always hate people at the very start, yeah. so you I hate you, hate the world, hated him, sort of lame, hated this man with a uh, <laughs> passion. So, and we were in tune, I was, I was this cocky, confident. All Ireland champion. Nah, it was wrong. It was actually Cole Island the first time. Yeah. The second time was Tim. Yeah, Cole Island. Was it Cole Island? Yep. Yep. Okay, you got to bring up seconds and everything there. <laughs> 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 I've got my own notes here. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the first, where was it? Cole Island? Cole Island. Cole Island. Cole Island. So I, I had there the Ulsters and I ain't going about it. So there's a guy, one guy I'm away with, Team McCullough. Team McCullough. And I went, who the fuck's Team McCullough? Never heard of him in my life. And someone came up to me, he's called Tyrone. And I'm, not a chance. Someone's called Tyrone as well. I'm the only Tyrone in the village. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically how it was. And then, so it's going to break on. This guy's getting slapped. I heard a bit about him. It was like, right, he's been beat by Egypt. He, he's, he's nobody. So I'm walking out. I have the fleshiest gear on ever. Fleshiest gear. What age were you, 14? 14 or so. Uh, All right, 14. I, I was actually only after doing the Mary Kelt. Were you in a movie? Were you? No, why? <laughs> <laughs> like every week. <laughs> but I was only out there the mini I had a bit of money, so I bought all the fleshiest gear. And I thought it was a superstar. Did you look the part? It did look the part. I looked across the ring at Trumbo Call walking out. Oh my god. And this guy had No boots. No boots. He had fucking runners on. <laughs> he had big orange or green vest on or yellow green, shorts. Green, green and yellow vest. Oh, oh it was off. Chris. Most we power grey socks. And uh, uh, them, <laughs> uh, that hair he- 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 <laughs> Star pack or something. <laughs> it was the worst look ever. Said I went. I genuinely went to myself. Poor fella, he is getting. Three lads can't get stopped. Battered. Everyone thought getting stopped. I went in. You came out with your stupid fucking style. Hands fucking flying. I went, what the fuck is going on? And uh, I couldn't hit him. I couldn't hit the one. And he just kept on all these big left hands. And everyone going, go out, Tara, go out. And he thought he had all his fan base because all my, my support was shouting for him. And he's like, oh, fuck. So everything I hate, they were shouting for me. He was doing, it was long. I was feeding off your support. <laughs> and then you beat me. And I cried my eyes. You cried his eyes. <laughs> and I hated you ever since then. <laughs> I, with a patient, hated you. Oh, You're like, hey. We all hated you. Oh, we hit- no one liked him. And he didn't, yeah, can't. he didn't give a fuck. And then he beat me in the next year again. And then the next year, we both won all irons. We're both two weights. Can you believe it or not? You were the heavier weight. You were the <laughs> heavier weight. You were the weight above me. And I was the weight below That's the way it always was. You were always lighter than me. Yeah. You're a fat cunt. Like, uh, I remember th- there was meant to be a trilogy in this. Uh, I was wondering what that kid brought up. And then <laughs> <laughs> Turon didn't make a weight. Do you know what happened, bud? Do you know what happened? <laughs> The day before the weigh-in, like, I was a very skinny kid, obviously. Yeah. And uh, my ma always made me eat my dinner. It's like, I wasn't allowed to skip dinner. So I had that all day. was on, on, on route to making the weight. And then I got home, trained my body stuff, was, was 
looking like I'll wake up on the weight and got home my ma had this big fucking Sunday dinner sitting there for me I was like why well, can't eat dinner she's like you're fucking eating your dinner yeah, I cooked that dinner you're eating and I had to sit there and I just, just looking and going I am never waking to this weight tomorrow next day train my bags off I was only point two over but because there was TV out there, do you remember there was TV out there? Uh, the it was new TV or something. It was, it was Shane Mc... Barry McGuigan. Uh, Shane, uh, Shane McGuigan was fighting. was winning. So, because he was winning, all the new TV and all there, videoing the fucking... And you're only allowed to weigh him once. Because uh, they wouldn't let you uh, re-weigh. And they wouldn't let me re-weigh. And at point two, usually, usually they would let your weigh with point two as well. In amateur, like... Sure, buddy. But that's, <laughs> that's actually how you, we semi started talking. Yeah, because when that happened, I yeah. think I just came up these that day and was like, right, we're not fighting, so can I stop no, you? No, 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 Mitch. No, I was, I was trying to organize a third thing, yeah. I, that's right. I was trying to, like, fuck, it's tough. <laughs> You see, it's above here. Ah. We're both trained. We're going to the car park. We, we were walking in. He gets the... nuts. He was up first. I, 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 honestly, we were walking in the shop. And it, it, see, not weighing in, it, it feels worse than losing just. Like, at least I didn't get an opportunity to fucking defeat. So I was near breaking down, walking down. And this cop was following us. I was like, is he serious? <laughs> just tagging along. And, and everyone, everyone's got thrown. Everyone's slagging the body. Yeah. He's been just three times. Now. Been, I was going fucking insane <laughs> in my head. I was like, yeah, I'm going to start swinging here. I was ready to swing. Because on that note, I was listening to your previous podcast. And do you know the way, what was it? About the beef with Cracker and was a fake. But yeah. people don't realise who you is like... They may think it's fake, even with O'Hara Davis. Like, that was... Oh, uh, really? Like, he's a man he's, were, he's yeah. were arranged to meet O'Hara Davis and have a wee bit of an argy-bargy, but I met you that night after, and you were few, like you were proper. <laughs> and one and I was like, it's just the same thing you probably would have. I get I see red so easily. Uh, so even when like, they get we public worked with him and Crowder, they were going, was that all set uh, up? And I'm going, I, I, if you, you don't know, understand, this guy is an absolute lunatic. <laughs> like, proper... You know, I went through Sean Haggerty for a shortcut. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just see red very easily, but so I, I hate it you proper. Or I, I still hate it you that day. I wouldn't yeah. say we were friends that day. No, I what happened to be but friends? I, I, I like totally friends. Like, Fuck, we lost cap all. <laughs> yeah, he, he falls, he falls the guy for how shitty. Like, he, he's if you ever look at the box and go, he's shade or good, he looked like the worst. But everything wrong, wrong I don't know. everything wrong, wore the wrong gear. He, it was fucking insane, but anyway. The re- the reason we started being friends, I thought, was uh, the Four Nations. Four Nations uh, mm. So I, in the Four Nations, in, the, in, in Ireland trips, you get paired with who's your weight, the weight above you or the weight below you. So me and him landed, we did the shared room together. Me, uh, yeah. me, me and, and Pete Brady. Brady. <laughs> and uh, what happened? Uh, I don't know what I was doing again. Because everyone sort of knew each other from yeah, the no previous mates. boxing scenes. Again, like I like to reiterate, man had no mates. So I was just, I was new on the team, <laughs> no mates, and I just thought I have to do something here to get noticed. <laughs> so uh, I got coffee beans and wrote Peter Brady all over uh, your bed. I walked and in. And Tyrone being Tyrone cracked up. I walked in. What the in. fuck did you do to my <laughs> <laughs> I walked in. <laughs> and obviously, Trump McCullough has not spoke a word to anyone. He's like, we're sailing the like, sand. <laughs> no, it spoke to no one. And, uh, and I walked in, there's Peter Peter B wrote all over my name in coffee, and I flipped down, Peter B, where the fuck is he? And he's sitting in the corner just looking at his phone like nothing happened. And I was like, it's, I go fuck him out. And I found out it was him, and I was like, you know what? What a fucking uh, lad. You came and you came and said to me, but say Tom McCullough was absolutely <laughs> fucking nuts. <laughs> I know Peter B all over my bed. <laughs> but he knew he knew knew no one. No, no. Like uh, I ain't got a ballsy thing to do. I got you jumped that trip as well, didn't yeah. I? Yep. What happened that trip? So that's when when we talk, when the McDonald's <laughs> when we were wrong. Tell us what so we talked about this before. Yeah, but let's tell about your perspective, what was going on in front of us. I forget who I was walking, but I just remember he was a busload of Scottish boys drove past us and started mm. calling wankers. So I thought it was a bit of crack and just, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then we, I fought off and over. We dandered on, stopped at McDonald's. Next thing I look at, he's getting the head. I thought Lewis Crocker was there. Ah, fuck out of the Do you know I'm glad you're on this podcast because there's been a lot of stories I've told and people have rolled underneath him. Bullshit. Why you lying? All this shit. I like. I love a bit of proof. And now you're on for for the pr- the proof of these stories. So that story in Scotland was yeah. facts. So we we didn't know about that until like 
Yeah, uh, maybe I, I think he's done uh, no about for about a year. Uh, for about a year until he because when their kids got off the bus, we were walking with like a good bit behind you, and then your man says it's I was on the phone to my cousin, and then the file says it's home. Oh, so you want a box? And I went, all right, you want a box? <laughs> <laughs> and then that was it. it was a, the chase was on. <laughs> <laughs> but I got, I got recently abused. Fuck's <laughs> sake. Hey, boo hoo, hang a beat up. Uh, <laughs> you hadn't even fought yet, hadn't you? Nah, I was fighting the, the, the next day. I was fighting the next day. Got beat on anyway, so it doesn't matter. But uh, that's not even the first time that we went away with you and you started murder. No, that was the first time it was left away there and afterwards. Lift wasn't it the last time? Dem- wasn't the last time Denmark? Denmark, 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 sorry, Denmark, not Lovely. No, Denmark. Denmark, we were all getting... What well, was it? We were all getting this... Wait, we might have got the damn pizza. The damn pizza. pizza. I thought I could out-eat Tommy, but... Mm. <laughs> no, none of us... None of us was. <laughs> yeah. Did none of us finish it? Tommy did. Tommy did. Did and you? Then yeah. We got okay. an order chase somehow. Fuck <laughs> six, on start murder again. So we were all... All the neo-Nazis. We were all walking back. And see where... See, Annie, where you go in Ireland. Iron trip. You go to the ghetto, the ghettos, because yeah, that's see. where the, that's where the best boxing gyms are. So we're in this absolute ghetto in Denmark, and uh, we're walking home from a pizza place. And what what happened? So we all went up to us three, Mick Conlon, and was there another person, another boxer? But Eugene Duffy, Eugene Duffy, was, yeah, the, was the official. I think there might have been an hour boxer, no? Mm. Was it was just us four. I think it might have just been us four. And then, once again, me and Eugene were still talking. <laughs> you were off a wee bit in front. No, they were behind. Him and Mick. Oh, you were behind with me. And then next thing, you just ran past. And then I seen these fucking neo-Nazis. Can't! Can't! <laughs> can't! <laughs> what what happened? What? What happened then is they're getting closer trying this fucking bottle of them. <laughs> what happened was we were walking past these, there was big flats, like Divis flats. And uh but there's hedges in front of the, the Divis flats, so Mick and him launched their fucking battles over the hedges. But they didn't know there was a fucking crowd of about forty people there. So they launched their, their fucking battles and then they walked past like nothing was happening. And then all these cunts just came out of the fucking bushes. What the fuck? And they're all cunt big. I'm sorry, my remember going, cunt, cunt, cunt. They're all, all, they were all <laughs> big, so they were. I threw them to the ground and seen that started murder. And instead of like saying sorry, and he went, come here, <laughs> come here. <laughs> just bring it. <laughs> just, just for all you ones on Spotify, he was waving his arms. Like saying, the rock? Like the rock saying, bring it. And they just charged. They brought it? They the brought it. Uh, the, the reason he said it but is because he's a great runner and he knows it. He knows he's a great runner. So he knew he was fucking me over. But it, it backfired then because I was I was in the lead and I, I took a different path from there. I went straight on this fuck. Them bushes are the forest. Uh, they hide out and you all went hide. back to the hotel. So I was sitting there for about half an hour. Yeah, you, were going, you were going to die. <laughs> and I thought Eugene Duffy was dead because uh, I was like, they must have felt sorry on him and left him because there was no chance he out fronted them. Yeah. Like, <laughs> see, at that, at that moment, when, because you were all around and I was coming off the last thing that Jesus caused, the last havoc that they wreaked <laughs> in Scotland. And when me and Tyrone round, I got away and he didn't. So everyone was slagging me. Ah, oh, Tommy slipped around. Yeah, <laughs> slipping around that. And I was like, fuck, I said, I need to get my rabbit tasting back up on that running this time. And then the guys just kept running. There was about 20 of them. And then fucking, I was like, yeah. fuck it, see, easy. <laughs> and it was like the longest, I thought we weren't as far away. That's a, like a, a male sprint. Like yeah. literally, most you've just, ever ran your most ever. <laughs> and I kept going like slowing down a wee bit, and then because as you know, I can run fast. So once I was like thought it was safe, I turn around and look, they're still coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, you're uh, that, uh, that's another thing I want to bring up the running times that you have 10k running times, unbelievable. Is do you ever regret that you didn't take up running? Cause what what was your running time for? So I remember there's one. You, was you one we were like, go ahead. The one day you had your first ten k, and you told us all the time you got. What was your day leading up to that? You went out the night before, didn't you? Uh, I was. It was. Well, I was. Was we party up? Was when um, going out with life basically. So was uh, we party up in the Emmys, Gaff? We house party. Oh, that was an old one. That was right, the Don't Give ten k. Uh, but this was my first ever 10k and my boxing club with the Ollies were like 
we enter us, it's down in Bunkrana where I used to box. You only entered it to lose weight, but didn't you? Uh, it's the only reason I ever ran mm. <laughs> to lose weight. So uh, I went out the night before, it's blocked, uh, steaming. And then got up KFC to bring me around and went down there. I just thought it was a wee, thick, I didn't realise it was a proper competition. I just thought it was a wee Like a fun run, yeah. Uh, <laughs> went down wearing a wee pair of Adidas, Dan Smith's, <laughs> I think I might have done it in tracks of bottoms or something. <laughs> And then a big crowd was going, and I was like, this is a proper race. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's more far, man? <laughs> <laughs> and it, I always knew it was a decent enough runner, because I had their run every day to lose weight, but I never knew that I could actually compete. Yeah. And so the gunner whistle went or whatever, and I worked my way up the front, and I was like, I wonder can I, how long I can hold this for, and then I took over the boy it was one. <laughs> Five, six years, like I might fuck up one day. <laughs> and then I got the way they came, and I was, I was giving it loads, like I was fucked, but I was that stubborn, I was like, nah, I really right. want they want me, so I kept on it, and I think it was like 32 and a half minutes or something. Oh, okay. Really? Jesus That's crazy. But then once the club knew that I was a decent runner, they made me enter all these other ones, and I kept one and one and one. Oh. And you were winning, like, you were winning races <laughs> flat the fuck out. And I was wearing these, it was all over Donegal, like it must have been like the running scene, and oh. people started talking, and I was wearing these these dance muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I done a 5k once and I won it and they give me a pair of proper <laughs> <running shoes. laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Did they give you some <laughs> pure foul? They must have won. You were in poverty. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Mike. <laughs> 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 they must have thought he's showing us up one of these fucking races in a pair of stance muscles. We'll have to give him something decent. Ah, uh, fuck me. Unreal. That's ridiculous. Why were you running in stance muscles anyway? I just, this is what a friend does. <laughs> I did used to run, remember? We're both unknown for that remember, athlete of all time. If there's a wrong way to do something, I'll find it. Remember, remember the time me running uh, in my boxing boots in Cave Hill and I, uh, we, were, we went we, out in this we, big run, do you remember? Uh, the big run. the funniest thing ever. Jordanstown. And we had these heart rate monitors on. <laughs> and you had to go up, up a Cave Hill. It was a big, big massive run anyway. Yeah, to, was it two or three laps? Two or three laps or something. Or something. So I ran up. And I hid, like, like, like <laughs> halfway up, halfway up the cable, I hid. So I just, had, I sat there for 40 minutes of it until you've done your laps. And then once you pass and a few others pass, a good run like fuck, then I joined in again. And then we're all getting the, the, the readings of our, of our, I, for, overhead. I forgot about the heart rate monitor. <laughs> <laughs> I just seen Terry McKenna running and boom, and running again. You didn't even wait till I passed because I was on my last lap or something. Just seen you come out of the crash about 500 yards ahead. Like, <laughs> Still beat you. I was scared. <laughs> oh, it was me. funny. Like, remember on the, on the junior team, on the runs, and it became a thing. Right, you take a slap. Uh, we all had a wee hang we were going to try and beat Tom. And there was, there was even one time, me and him, well, we'll actually talk about this as well because we're going to talk about it. The time we mur- tried to murder you, apparently. Yeah. So we've talked about this on the, on the, on the, uh, Patreon, is it? Podcast before, but, we'll, but now we've got a bit of, bit of backup. Now we've got your accomplice. Yeah, we've got the accomplice here. So what was it? We walked in there. We used to stay in Griffin College, it was called. Well, I think, was uh, next door to the stadium just yeah. to. Do- dorms is like fucking just we that's student accommodation comedies, no. so we stayed in there Tommy stayed with his weight and I burn stayed in yeah. weight. Uh, burn roll. and uh, we were in the room next door to him what happened we were in Europe we just chatting shit or whatever before How'd before bed and I noticed your key card was on the floor and I was like this is too good an opportunity <laughs> here Grab, well, somebody well, grabbed it with my toes and just <laughs> <laughs> and in my back pocket <laughs> so I said throw I remember off. you you leaving you just had thrown and I oh, oh, I got what? the key <laughs> so because uh, we were we were in there me and Troma call it, were in there for messages we yeah. were biggest messages in Ireland team ever that's my proudest achievement as boxing is not any titles of one it was low blows the biggest being messer, biggest messer. <laughs> <laughs> My proudest achievement, <laughs> but uh, got your key, key card, and then I think I just wanted to go on for water, water movies or something. But yeah, mm, big, Carole, yeah, he always has to go to the extra step, doesn't he? I don't like oh, getting yeah. another for this, I forget what happened, but so uh, oh, yeah, forget <laughs> it was taking an opportunity. And it, it was, it was, we, we waited all night, we, we sat, we all sat all night. there all night, just going dragging their sleeping it, dragging their sleeping it. Oh, it was hell, and then we filled up a two liter bottle of just soap and. Coke and water and everything. That's uh, what I had, but we just on and, and everything. Everything I could fall with, and you had the fire extinguisher. Uh, <laughs> I would have rather that though. Did the fire extinguisher? 
Uh, we so didn't know the fire extinguisher was dust. No, we did. We thought it was foam. We thought, we it, thought was it was foam. foam. Fuck so me. So let McKenna tell the rest of the story. So we, he was walking in with a bucket and I was like, I need something. So I grew up the fire extinguisher. I was like, fuck it. Can't do any harm with a fucking fire extinguisher. <laughs> Look at Tommy's, Tommy's still discussing it. Tommy can't not hear a story and not get annoyed. <laughs> so, so it was about three in the morning. Two in the morning. And... We snuck up and we put the key and burst in and ran into, <laughs> ran, ran into the room and he he fucked the fucking bucket of water all or shit all over fucking burner row. I burst in with the fucking fire stinger. <laughs> I mean the place filled. I thought filled when you realised it was dust you would have stopped. <laughs> <laughs> it filled the dust I just kept on. <laughs> and Tommy's going what the fuck what the fuck <laughs> and he was going metal and we were in stitches. And we ran back down to our room, locked the door. Oh. He came banging down. Get the fuck out of here, get out of here. And we just shit ourselves. Tommy's proper angry. I've, I've never seen Tommy oh. like proper, proper angry. I was, he was, he was chilled person ever, oh. but you were so annoyed. He was fuming yeah. and he was going mad outside the door. And we were like, we're dead. We are dead here. <laughs> and, uh, and then it calmed down a wee bit. And about half an hour later, me and you said, fuck it. We'll go walk. We we just walked around. We walked uh, the streets of Dublin. This we, is four o'clock in the morning, by the way. You know, we we walked the streets of Dublin from four to. You, in in our team, you line up at eight in the morning, about for training sessions. Uh, you have you've all be here. It's kind of like a attendance, like a roll call. You'd all line up, and uh, so got to eight in the morning. We just got back. He wouldn't slap or nothing. We went to fucking uh, to go to training. We all <laughs> we all lined up and burning and roll. Tommy McCarvey, nowhere to be seen. We were like, he's fucking rats. And uh, got to 15 minutes later, we're all just still standing there. And then they waltz in. They, 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 they could just have happened or something. I know. Like, you could only see their eyes. They were covered in dust. <laughs> uh, they, they must have, sat- must have found an extra fire extinguisher. They rolled in the dust as much as fucking possible. Listen to me. You don't realise. You just come in. Blasted the hanging round. <laughs> that fairness, room. There was a like smoke. You of couldn't dust. fucking see anything. <laughs> <laughs> and all, all I could just hear. I see. I see. Like, I love my stick. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. I just burn. I actually woke up. The burn and go. <laughs> and then we're trying to get the window open. The window wasn't open. We couldn't breathe. It was fucking hell. But you didn't have to come in. It was. You didn't hell. have to come in. Yeah, no, no, I want to hear. Did he have to come in or was it a plan? We were trying to get our stuff together. Yeah, we fuck off. Our gear. We were training for the World Championship. Yeah, you had to be on time. Uh, you had to be we on were time. fucked. We were, we were, we were, I can't even remember what was happening. But I remember the place was just like, you couldn't see in it. And yeah. it, took, it took hours that to is, get it clear. It, it, it actually took hours to clear. <laughs> and then Did all, you just clean it up? No, we had to wait till all the dust settled. <laughs> we couldn't fucking see nothing for hours, right? And then we couldn't get our gear, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't even go in there, like, get worse. It's not like if we were like, yeah, that's all about and fucking make it look worse. <laughs> but you came, you came in, I know I'm joking, they, they brought the bomb down to the, the high performers team. They kind of fell through the door, more or less. Covered in oh, dust. Try, try. I started, started coughing. <laughs> Tommy says there was an attempt in his life. The coach is That's like, a quote. The coach was like, where were, where were you guys? Well, what's going on here? Uh, uh, but Jimmy, there was an attempt in my life last night. Someone. <laughs> two ma- he said two masked men bur- <laughs> burst in his room. <laughs> Two, two random guys <laughs> burst into the room, middle of the night. <laughs> I'm a lad. I'm a fucking lad. You knew what you were doing. <laughs> what I'm a lad. <laughs> we don't want to say he's a rat, tout, but he's a rat. Didn't tout, <laughs> you didn't tell him. You didn't tell him. You didn't tell Two men who I didn't know who it was <laughs> yeah. burst in and tried to kill us. Yeah. So <laughs> you knew who it was, first of all. I, and sat, yes, you did. Oh, you shouted to me, banged him a fucking door. <laughs> <laughs> fucking, yeah. anyway, who else would it have been? But anyway, Jimmy was like, right, whoever it was is getting off, is off his team. You said, fucking, you don't go into the words, not happening. But me and Trump McCullough are the absolute favourites of this this squad. We're like, we're like, everyone loved us. I don't know why, but they loved us. But, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, you loved the hit just. Uh, so we were like, fuck, we're fucked. And then, 
they were like, you need to own up, whoever it was, own up, because we were getting the videos for it. And then Trump was like, well, we settled. And I was like, I don't know. And he said, I said, you know what? Settle. You split over I split right? over. <laughs> I, I split over him. He would, I said, he I would talk to me. He would talk to me the whole day. See, fucking, I was go- going home my head because my, my cousin was over. Labra for the. Uh, uh, did you labra for your cousin? I love. So I was like, I'm going up. Come up the, the same way, I got a wee exemption. And then, uh, I just don't Billy know. Watts was like, Tyrone's not going with you. And I went, Oh no, I'm just going up to see family. Okay, okay. I got on the bus, <laughs> sat down. <laughs> Next thing I just see Tyrone walking up the fucking thing. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm going home. He's really saying, You're a dick. <laughs> First guy <laughs> kill me. Now you're going to get me in trouble even more. <laughs> Fuck, oh. sir. I know it's ridiculous and he didn't tell me it's for ages. I was wearing it, I my favourite t shirt. I was wearing it all the time. And then one day he just came and he said, You know, I pissed all over right, it. I, after, right. after I, after I uh, done that Sparry thing with you, yeah, he grabbed all my pissed clothes all and pissed all over my clothes. They didn't know. No, yeah, first fair as <laughs> Fuck me, but I was you, the The Jews too, we have to respect them. Like, he's all take it to the death. He's all mm. never own up and admit the stuff. Like, that time we went to Lithuania, and remember we stole, well, we. Uh, we stole, one of you, was it you? Stole the physio's password. <laughs> I, was, I forgot about that. I was, I was actually, Mark, we, I we, sure was a nice we guy. We forgot that the death story. And I was, I was like, way we, we were for even having in Lithuania. It was fucking mellow right till we got to the airport. And then he kept him. who took the passport, Tom? Like, I was nuts. Mark, I don't know. He was <laughs> not happy about I don't know. So what, what happened? How we many stole, means? We stole our physio's passport. But then we left it back. I, I give it back. But he pretended then and he never he got it back. He didn't have it though. And they were putting the blame on us and we wouldn't back down. Uh, one back down. That's what happened, yes. So, yes, you stole the passport and then I said he's going fuck Because I wasn't part of it. I said he's going fucking mad. Like, there's going to be serious consequences here. And you were like, right, do we have to give this back? I said, yes. So he's giving me it. And I said, look, I don't know who you had it. I'm not telling who had it. But there's back. It wasn't me. And then... I said, well, we're not going to tell. And I said, oh, that's sweet, though. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> and uh, it, it, there's a scat on Sandy. You just sat there. What well, nuts. It was nuts. And he was fucking... Was it me and you, Ian? It was. No, it was, it was, it was I remember us two were sitting at ba- backdrop and he just came up to us and says, fuck you, you bastards. Because <laughs> we wouldn't know nothing. Are we Patsy? Was Patsy here? Patsy was there. Uh, and Patsy was Sandy. He was And we bastard her. Uh, oh, he <laughs> done, he done brilliant up and... Uh, what do you call it? Where it got turned? That's uh, because he wouldn't give on. Yeah, I, he, he bastard. <laughs> but I was so close to breaking. I was like, nah, I can't. I, I can't think do I had it. to talk you down a few yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were, we were, because ha- our messing, we were heavily hit. Like when we got from the junior team, we were loved in the junior junior team because we were probably hit the because we were a success. We were the success. Us, yeah. Steve, were the success of of the junior team. And then when we went to the seniors, seniors, I was starting again. It's like going from peace. Yeah, we're the we're the, we're the the kids of the group were the fucking they're all fucking flat on, on the world championships and stuff we just just joined so our first trip Jordan, Tom, first, the first camp first camp Tommy wasn't Tommy was a holiday I missed the first start. week guy. so he missed we were actually the only three people from the junior team uh, to cup, get to go uh, on get the senior team uh, we, we got selected we, there were only, you had to win certain things to get selected for the senior team we got oh. selected because well, I, 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 I didn't enter the seniors and I got beat in the final that's right uh, so Egan beat me so we were all like eighteen, just yeah. and then it was a it was a two week camp. I think I missed the first like six days, five yeah. or six days. I wouldn't even say it was first that long. I think it was, it was a couple days. days like. <laughs> you were raging because you said you landed and you were ready hit it because everyone hated me when I got there. Tommy was confused. Every single person as soon as he landed, everyone was hitting. He's like, "What the fuck's going on?" And he said, "Tyrone, what the, what did you just do?" And then, see when he was away, he wasn't there. We went around. And this is this is a group of serious. Like, see when we got on the senior team, it was so serious. Like, yeah. wow, we were talking about like, an Olympic medalist, world medalist, but, but they were European all... medalist. So the team was full of like international superstars, yeah. and they were all very serious about it. Like, it, it, there was no messing. Can't take zero messing. Uh. Training journals and uh, all this shit. Like, uh, what do you expect? Oh, what do you expect? <laughs> the top athletes in boxing to be like. That's what they were like in this team. And me and Trone joined this team, and I swear to God, I don't think we've done as much messing in one week. Of, uh, <laughs> we, we, did that. we got Carl Frampton, who's a big team, 
we we hoof pace at his shoes. There's no shoulders. We're we're doing everything all week. Like can or Kenny Egan was coming in from Olympic silver medal. Olympic silver medal. Just, just off the Olympics. Just off Olympics. I was. We were in a room above the doorway where you walk into the place. I opened the door, had a bucket of water, and just poured it over his head. He's captain of the Ireland team. And he went, fuck him out. What the fuck are you doing? And I laughed. I said, I'm going to get Tommy to beat the fucker. He said, I'm going to murder you, you bastard. <laughs> I hope he only just beat me. <laughs> and, and I think I shouldn't have done that to him. Like, he's, he was, he was he, the captain. He was the captain of the, the team. Like, that's like going into, from being a kid and going into the Ireland squad and like, Slapping fucking right or something. Right or something. Yeah. It's it's that mad. And I done that and he was fucking fuming. I said, Come on up and uh, we'll we'll fade or whatever and and then Eric Donovan near got in a scrap with him. And then there was after runs our 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 shoes be soaking. So we picked them up against radiators and we thought we'll we'll prank the lads, we'll we'll two face a few uh a few uh, shoes. With two pieces of one, with two pieces of two, it was it two pieces three? No, I think it was just two. We thought there was Carl Fronton and, and Eamon O'Kane, uh, and it turned out they were both Carl Frontons. <laughs> <laughs> and he was fucking mad. We didn't find out the next day. I think we're doing that lining up thing again. And <laughs> Billy's like, uh, so there's been a few complaints in front. I was like, oh, I got both my fucking shoes to the and I was laughing my balls. Hey, Kenny, can, there's a couple of juniors in the senior well, that's team. That's when we had a meeting. Remember, we had a team meeting. This was after I joined it. Yeah. So after I came into the camp, so all you, this madness has been going on, and I haven't done anything. And then, but they hated you still. They hated me, and they just jumped, lumped us all into one group. And then Eric came up. Remember, we got me yeah. at the door, and he's like, "Lads, everyone hates you." They're like, "What? Get Eric, I'm only here. I'm only through the door." <laughs> Let's see, just got off a bus two seconds ago. There's not nah, one person lads. likes this. Not one person likes this. Get in with me, lads. I'm a cracker. <laughs> You if, you get, if you get in with me you're in with a cracker and then people will start liking it and I said fuck you Hello. we don't want anyone to like us we like our team and uh, they were like are you serious and we said yeah said, they're all out in the cinema tonight not one asked you to go to the cinema and we were like we are like nah I can't believe it but we, our attitude was we don't give a fuck who liked us oh, and then do you know what happened we broke down the senior team to be everyone was a message. Yeah. But well, after I had, I had the team meeting, then, remember? Talk, because it was all, when you're on the squad, you talk about, you have meetings about how you feel the training's going and all that stuff. Mm. So, in this team meeting, people talking about what the heck the camps think and all this crack and where we can improve. And then, he can't even get stood up, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of juniors in the senior team. Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone just turned out long on us. <laughs> They're going around. Two pieces of people's clothes. Two pieces of their gear. <laughs> it needs to stop. It's like, fuck, we haven't done one thing. <laughs> but you'll be so soon. But you know what? See, after that, that trip, it just went fucking... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the senior team went down, Hulk. Uh, uh, it, went, it went down. But you know what? It went down. It went up. The behaviour went down and the results the result went, went up. up. Everyone was enjoying it and everyone started getting the results of medals everywhere we're going. Yeah. And um, like what are your best uh, probably one of your biggest achievements in amateur um, boxing yeah. is the senior bronze medal, would you say? Oh definitely. European, European European bronze medal, right? I was in Russia as well, like, tough place to go. Fucking it. But uh and Yeah, you you beat some good people out, out there, didn't you? Uh beat I just beat beat Moldova in the first round and Ukraine and uh for the medal, but mm. Ukraine was very good, like very, very good. He's actually probably better on Weaver who beat me in the semi-finals. But uh, we were we, we, boys, Weaver's right? top boy. Yeah. Just, he just couldn't beat me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my one highlight. Was you getting beat by Ian Weaver? I was like, yes, yeah. I've got one up on him. Redemption. Because <laughs> I, I, I never have anything up on this cunt. He always has. Like anyone beats me, Trung's beat them or something, or he's beat me twice, or then way him once. But <laughs> <laughs> but when any we forget beat, I was like, yes, or. PG. But it was it was great. Like I remember, like you said earlier about Tyrone Stale being so unorthodox. Mm. And when we were going to the European cadets, which was like under sixteen, and uh, we were everyone's out training. I was in getting chains, and you were warming up. And you were now we were fucking man. <laughs> and Johnny Joyce, who was an Olympian, he came around. Ah, oh, let's. That fella should be going to the championship. <laughs> That's not fair. 
He's gonna get hurt, lads. <laughs> Man, everyone get bit, twirled, fucking flew the flag. <laughs> it's so annoying for lads. But that, you know, that mild style that he had is what worked for you because for yeah. him, nobody, nobody could. Do you know what? But I was so underrated because see your feet work. It was fucking unbelievable. Like the faster feet were, and every like. I don't know why everyone stayed his day because it was because it was mad. It was amateur. For amateur, it was perfection. Uh, it was, uh, not, yeah, that's like footwork was obviously what I relied on, and like an amateur, it got me to where I was, but it just didn't work in a professional game. Mm. Like you can't move for ten or twelve rounds to find the catches up on you. Yeah. But on that note, on Jordan's time when we both of us toothpasted frontons or we toothpasted both of frontons goodies. We had to spar in the following day. Oh, jeez. Um, you got a hen. Obviously, I rely on my footwork. I'm moving. I can't fight on close at all. Yeah. At all. Like, so, uh, Frampton must ask for it. Uh, <laughs> he definitely did. Paired up with Frampton, senior champion, me just out of the juniors. Three of us in the ring. Three Qu- spars in the ring. quarter ring, one not so it? was quarter ring. I couldn't move, so I just had to stand with Frampton. And I took the worst Talk beat a bit. And I would stand up on the side of the ring. And John Cleary was was, was 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 this suicide. Running. So John Cleary was the Shank and Dyson coach, but like I say, everyone hated us. And John Cleary knew us from like, like junior, from we, coming through the ranks. But we, we used to torture him the uh, whole time. Torture. So he was fucking just smiling, loving <laughs> yeah. the sight of Tyrone McCullough getting <laughs> battered. There was blood everywhere, and I'm going, John, fuck's sake, I, I, John. We called him Strong John. <laughs> I was trying to take a knee, but Frampton just kept punching Holy me. Holding me up. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, because I could pair up with Davey Oliver. And Davey Oliver and Frampton were two killers at our weight. And I looked at him and went, do you know what? I'm glad I've got Davey Oliver over fucking Frampton. And you got a fucking... Uh, I remember, you, you nearly got knocked out. So it's the worst hiding I've took. Like, uh, um, I just had to stand there and take a knee. John, John wouldn't blow it up. And you know what? I deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> they had, it was a long time coming. It was. <laughs> uh, but... So you, your amateur career, would you say you, you you achieved what you wanted in amateur or did you want to achieve a lot more? Looking back, I probably have some regrets in mind we fucked about. Like, yeah. amateur-wise, I don't, pro, professionally, I don't believe I was ever going to win anything serious mm. in pro because of my style, but probably a few regrets in amateur, but still... You did a great uh, training, like, fuck like, uh, You're yeah. one of the hardest, actually, you are one of the hardest hard trainers. Uh, and it made me train hard so many times. I did, I did, did me, it? me and... Tyrone obviously were always the guy for fucking even in pro and any time Tyrone came to train and my train was stepped up twice as hard I don't know why you just love fucking hard training I did enjoy the hard training you still train like fuck now it's, it's always because it was a fucking just fuck I nice. didn't love the life in between camps and came back to camp for my training I remember there was just time in, in Scotland we'll get to the pro section now but uh, we were in Scotland training and with Christmas break over us and uh, we, we, we we got to January and we're like, right, let's we, jump, jump. We were actually starting camp coming off a night out, weren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we always did, but, but uh, we said, right, we'll jump on the scale. And I'm, at this stage, I'm about three weights above you, aren't I? I was, because I, I was super bantam, so there was feller, super feller and light, and then you were light welder. So mm. there's three, four. Four, four weights, weights between, between us. It. I went, so I'm already, usually I went about two stone heavier, or uh, stone, two stone now. Well, what from fifty five, they what with light welder from fifty five points. Then well, there's about eight kilos, about stone and a half. Stone and a half, half right. So I jumped on it. I said, Tron, you're never going to be fatter than me." No, you thought the 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 bet was that you would be over your you'd be over welterweight more than ah, I was yeah, over yeah. super Yeah, there's a bad friend. And you jumped on the scales, and you were like 74, 74 So you were like. Nine kilo over mm. welterweight, and then I jumped on the scales, and I was like seventy four. I was seventy six. Yeah, you were over me. You were having me. You're heavier than me for getting down the fucking weight. But some of the weight cuts you had were bad. Uh, Unreal. Uh, like I remember seeing you in against that Josh at, Kennedy. Josh Kennedy yeah, was the, the worst I've ever seen you uh, in my life. We had we and had people like us from you were a kid too. It's all, like, but that's why I've been such a good runner because all I've done is yeah. Try and I remember this is why I'm such a good runner. Runner. I stayed up in his house quite quite often. And uh, I was there for a couple of days as 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 stint, and um, the second day when I went out, had a had a spell. Back home at about two three in the morning, got to sleep. He gets a knock at the door about seven or eight in the morning. He said, "Right, I'm away run here." And I said, "What do you mean your way run? We just literally are on a, after a night out. I'm home with the bikes." He said, oh, "I might die makes me go run." And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "I had to put on this sweatsuit." He drives me out, whatever ten miles they are. are 
sad mage or whatever and then drops me off and drives home and I have to, I have to run home I have to make my own way home not, not only that there he's bolting a hole so it runs uh-huh. like that so that's like his dad every day used to just how well, often was that shell abuse <laughs> on the hole <laughs> He had, head, he had in a sweatsuit up a, hills. The only thing is, I, I don't know any, anything different, so it was just normal in me. <laughs> don't you ever make me do that from you start boxing? Uh, it's from the way. first day. I want to be a boxer. Where do you think? See you in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Hank. Where do you think he's an unbelievable runner? Every yeah. day, run up hills. Like, Daria is hilly as fuck in a sweatsuit, hung over the bollocks. The man is built no. to run. Like, uh, he should he have been a runner. No. Billy, was, Billy Walsh, who's was the Irish. Amateur head coach always used to say to me, Tony, you should have been a runner. And I used to think he was just being a dick because he thought I was shit at boxing. But, <laughs> but <laughs> the thing is, he was a minute, you know, and this was, as see his, K, his KFC and his uh, Stan Smith. Hung over and all and Stan Smith. He was still one minute off qualifying for Olympics, was it? Yeah. Commonwealth. Commonwealth. And like, one minute. You see the, and that's without any training for running. That's like, not what very running. Had a, that's not uh, running good. You don't even run in shit or something. Like, like I always said, you're hung over. You could have been KFC? The, the first person to go to the Commonwealth Games for both boxing and then running. And get Two sent home from both. Fields. I know. <laughs> well, what happened there? Were you getting sent home? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We're coming back to the the amateur days. He went to the Commonwealth. Commonwealth Games. New Delhi, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. and there. Probably one of the highlights. Another highlight of your career. Uh, I was going there. We the said every night we watched Lion, Lion King. King. Every night, did you? And Why did you watch us? Just to be routine with right? you. Terrible. It was brilliant. Nah, me and Tommy were in because you weren't there, and mm. <laughs> you weren't there. No, <laughs> this is my stint of uh, drinking too much. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so he's about to end the You of course got put out the first fight. Was it? No, I was beat for a medal uh, by a point. Wait, it was already a point. Yeah, cunty. Aye, that's your going to ask probably until later on that. You probably were. Aye, see how many time Trone or Tommy probably fought and I got beat in the early doors I wanted them to compete. It's the way it is on boxing. Did you hear him? Did you hear him? Stop talking shit. It is an amateur professional. It's different. Aye, I'm a professional. An amateur must be loves company. Yeah. I remember the time. Just uh, two haters right there. I never <laughs> felt like it. I remember when he won the fucking bronze medal in uh, uh, Mexico. He wouldn't. He kept rubbing it in our faces. Uh, Losers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we didn't want you to win when we got uh, beat. And there's a time I, I won in uh, Lithuania, the European things. Olympic, I, youth Olympics. Uh, I got a, a bronze and you just didn't even fucking go to the ceremony for me. <laughs> He's, he's fucking shafted me. <laughs> Did we hang off? No. So fuck <laughs> off. Oh, you want to be beat. But anyway. Um, what were we saying there? Uh, right, so you went to Commonwealth. Right. So you ended up getting sent home. What uh, happened? What was the scandal? Uh, well, I'm not trying to absolve myself from all the blame and blame it on Donnelly because, True. but uh, obviously I put out. We went out and got blocked. I mean, steaming. I, I black out when I drink, so I can't really remember much happening. But I remember me and Donnelly were steaming and we were on the village, and Donnelly, which. It's going to be justified now. He was being a bit of a fucking madman, so yeah, <laughs> to say the least. And I was just guilty by association. And these people came up to us and just, gra- we, you have to wear an accreditation. Ooh, yeah. The village just grabbed the accreditation office. I thought nothing of it. I went on about my night. I just think I was sitting with some African country, like having a crack with him, and woke up next day by. Banging the door. What did you do last night? And I was like, what? I was lying on the sofa or something. Even no, you were in the it. room. Because I remember the fucking thing. It was like about six o'clock in the morning. It was so early thing. Big banging the door. Rap, rap, rap. Get up, get up. I was like, what's going on? What did you do last night? And I genuinely took I don't know. I genuinely don't know. You fucking do you know? I was like, I don't. You do? I don't. Right, come come on down here for a meeting then. And then uh, I walked in the Paddy Barnes' room and told him I'm Eve. He was making wait and he bossed out laughing. He's like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so we went down for a meeting and they said, what did you do last night? And I says, I don't know. And he says, you do? He says, I genuinely don't know what I've done last night. So if you want to film in, you can uh, tell me. And he says, well, you were just being a scene and you were threatening staff. And... <laughs> uh, there's a danger he could be in trouble with Indian police, so he's the, the Indian to, police. Uh, he's going to have a choice to leave <coughs> or stay and risk getting prosecuted. So I was like, right, hang on, then two seconds. I was like, who did I threaten? And they're like, 
you threaten someone with a chair. <laughs> <laughs> and I smiled at it and they weren't laughing. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, they I was, weren't laughing. I'm not an angry guy when I'm drunk. I've been angry once when I was drunk and I was with you. In the back of a taxi. Oh, are you trying to get us killed? To somebody, but are you trying to get us killed? Bring in the worst thing ever. Yeah, it was now. I had to resolve it, is she? But I'm honestly not an angry drunk. Like, this lady doesn't sound like me. So I says, I grabbed a chair and threatened someone. He says, No, you went to grab a chair. And I says, That doesn't even make sense. Yeah. I can go to grab a chair. And he says, I was like, Well, no, I'll, I'll risk staying and see the CCTV on because I don't think I would have done that. And he says, No, well, we've booked your flight. She's like, She didn't have a choice. And I was like, You know what, sweet, and there's a shithole in it. I, <laughs> I loved him, though. But see, then after that, it was, everyone was trying to keep it all on the reps. Then on the morning of, of my your daughter's friggin' christening, on my daughter's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> we pay we're on that whole big spread big Dude. picture you with all your fucking trophies and medals and all Toro McCullough sent home from Commonwealth Games Scandal it was the news of the world oh, I, I've been trying to get that article ever since and can never find it have the best it. article you've ever had wasn't anything to do with boxing I still have that on my phone do you? If she's one of you I have it somewhere can, can, we, can, we, stick, can we stick this up for everyone to see his right. this article so we'll get it after right. but uh what is the actual article? What's it say? <laughs> the headline says, Leaned out of car and punched man and groin. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest article I've ever seen. Oh. Hey, what happened there, boy? So you're... There's me saying I'm not violent to. <laughs> oh, <I'm not> saying... <laughs> but again, I think I didn't do that. I think it was just a, a lie. Is it not a CCTV one? Nah, the man was meant to come to court, but he never came, so I could have just played not guilty and got away with it. Like, mm. but... Well, let's, let's move on to... The pro life. What made you decide to, to turn pro from amateur? I uh, was beaten to the Irish senior finals by John Julian Evan and McConnell, so it was like. No, no shame there. Eh? Only by a point both times, was it? No, nah, Nevin beat. I uh, never beaten by two, but losing by three points to Nevin's like losing nah. by ten. You're nah, never nah. going to get them back. I nah, know, nah, I nah, know. Nah. And then Mick was, well, I thought I'd done feet. enough, but that was, no, it was unanimous at that stage. Oh, right, 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 right. A lot of beef when you and Mick fought, but anyway. There wasn't beef, we were mates, like, but he, I thought I won it, and he, said, he yeah. got the decision, so. But, uh, right, so you turned, why did, was it, did you want to turn pro? Because there was, like, I remember that when you said you were going to turn pro, there was a lot of, and I was probably included in it, going, nah, is this Dale going to do anything in pro? Uh, definitely, and as sure touched on it earlier, probably never would have got too far with my style, because I wasn't a big puncher, and. But you, you say it, and then I couldn't believe when you turned pro. Every single person you've done in, in the second round, first round, and I think, what the fuck is going on? Trump doesn't hit that hard, does he? had a good formula at the start because who, whoever you were training with just let you just be who you were. I think that was always your thing, amateur even as an amateur. Like, they didn't try and like, shape you or anything, just go and do what you do. You just need to get him fit. And then I remember when you came down and joined Pete's gym, man, and I was training there, and Pete... Before you even joined, we were talking about you and Pete was saying, Tom McCall, you can't you can't try and change him because whatever works for him works for him. If you try and change him, you know it he'll, he'll not do well. And then and then he came down and then you fucking you had a good bit of success. Like you say, you end up now trying to run for ten rounds. It doesn't it doesn't work. You need to fight the perfect fight like to yeah. do that. But uh, But I thought you was, were getting a lot of traction. We're getting knocked out the knockout when you're when you're turn pro and then just going through the levels, going through the levels, levels, yeah, just levels like. And then uh, when when you went over the you, you went over the what do you call him George Vaughn George George Vaughn what a man shout out Georgie what a guy but you're over there and I swear to God I've never seen a sat up like this in my life it was prisons better <laughs> there's prisons better in this place so there. I had stayed over there once and I was, I'd stayed in this place Maggie Mays it was called Maggie Mays I stayed there for no, a couple no May Duncan's May Duncan Maggie, Maggie May, May, May Duncan's Mays sorry. eating Belfast <laughs> yeah, yeah so May Duncan's and uh, do you know what it's a, it's a bar that has <clears throat> apartments well not apartments like rooms at the top of it and, uh, it's character building <laughs> <laughs> so I went there I went there when I used to go to Liverpool for a couple of days I'd go there just when, when Donny Vaughan was over and uh so I thought it was a decent wee spot, but I didn't think of how you'd have to live if you were there for 10 weeks for a camp and Tron, Tron joined George Vaughan. 
<laughs> you wouldn't have seen this at all. There's actually, if you go on the internet, on my, oh, I made it deleted, but there's a, I have a video of your setup. It's fucking unbelievable. There's a single bed in the middle of the room with, he's a wee mini fridge for, for his food. No, the mini, fr- the mini fridge was when I moved up in the world. Oh, was it? Because my first camp there was a bag out the window. Oh, bag out the window. Me. Bag out the window for his... <laughs> That's way. For his, for, for his thing. But then... You there was, the no just way. prayed it didn't get too warm so the month didn't go off. <laughs> there was no washing machine. He had an omelette maker for his food. That thing was stinking. <laughs> it was this, that was the worst omelette I've ever had in my life. Uh, he had an omelette oh. maker. He had a wee microwave. He had a kettle. And then he had... You couldn't wash clothes. It's, I'm not joking. This place is. It's about the size of a shed. It's, it's tiny. Like tiny. tiny room, it was tape. Yeah, well, she had to This was it. Tyrone set it off. Tyrone set it off somehow because one minute I was in Belfast and then about two weeks later I was living in Liverpool <laughs> and you'd be a coach and accommodation <laughs> and everything. Well, no, I was shaping off. That's why I was, I was above a bar. And the bar was so shit. The throne's abusing you for accommodation that he set nah, up. Nah. I was there a couple of times I thought it was sweet. See, to be fair, Liverpool was the best stage of my, my career. It was yeah. the best move I made. Going up to Scotland was... No, the, the, Scot- the Liverpool training was unbelievable. Like the, the Everton Hills. Was unbelievable. George is a lethal fucking coach. Class yeah, coach. I heard, I've heard he's like, George never tried to change me or anything. George loved the way the I boxed. Loved it. Mm. See, and Hensley, maybe you should have surprised you stay there forever. I bet you're Danny didn't give me a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a wing dude. <laughs> what happened, dude? He's got winged out for boxing reasons. Right. Oh, but Danny Vaughan? No, this, this is what happened. I, I, was, I said Liverpool was the best stage of my pro career. It was, I had two great ones. I beat Joe Hamm hmm. for the kill. Oh, was that under him as well? Uh, and then I beat Josh Kenny. Josh Kenny was my standout performance. Yeah. It was unbelievable on that hmm. for the European WBO. And uh, like people were starting talking to me about getting a world title fight maybe in the, in the fella. Uh, I was the ranked number, were like number... I was ranked number five in yeah. the WBO. So there was starting to be talk about me getting a world title shot and everyone knows Danny wanted, you know, a world a world champion. I was having a break over Christmas and Danny started texting me, Danny, my dad's not up to training no more and he can't really handle it, it's gonna kill him. I think he should come up to Scotland with me and I was like, Fuck Danny, sorry, I don't know what. If that if that's the way it is, then so be it, no bar. He says, right, no bar, just text me to Asher and let him know. <laughs> 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 you remember that? I was I, 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 and to be honest I was delighted to get up to Scotland like because McKenna and Paddy trained yeah it was really company it would be brilliant but I was like they had a good thing going bad, there bad yeah, yeah. your dad like it's so and, and as I said my two best ones with his dad and then it just split for no reason yeah. he must have thought I was a cunt you were a cunt what, what can you what, did you text him what did you text I him I had then? to ring him man. it was the most awkward I, I'm not good at speaking on the phone anyway Yeah. it was the most awkward phone call in my life I think can you remember what was said he was just got it he was just got it and I feel bad of, now uh, I, I feel bad now he like, says right okay and hung up so we talked to him ever George, since Georgie loved me Nah, I haven't spoke to him since. Jesus. Have you not? Fuck. Nah, sure. Surely you have. Nah, we went to his mom's funeral, like, but. <laughs> oh, uh, it was Mrs. Funeral. Well. Mrs. Mrs. Funeral. Mrs. Funeral, sorry. Um, but I uh, joined. You joined Danny, probably what were you, 8 0, 9 0? Ah, uh, about that, uh. You joined back, back. I was buzzing. Got Trumbo Collar back. I was trying to get you on the scene as well at one stage, but I had Trumbo Collar back. We're sharing a room again. A lot of mess was going to. We invented it, I think, called Tyrone Day of Durs. Yeah. During yeah. her time. It's went viral. Which will in the boxing world. come back. We're bringing it to Whiskey and Wade. Yeah, we're going to bring it to Whiskey and Wade. In, in the, in the coming course. month or two, we will be doing a Tyrone Day of Durs, which will be a day of challenges and forfeits. And now you're both retired. Durs, I know. Uh, I, no holds barred. Uh, what, was there holds barred before? <laughs> there, there wasn't. Oh, believe it or not, this man was being very... Yeah. He, he had the leash on, so he yeah, was. Uh, I'm, I'm only eating pedigree, I'm not going to eat whiskers. <laughs> 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 nah, the last ones were insane, but we can we can ramp it up a level. I think we can ramp it up a level. Why, so, why, how much more can you ramp it up? I don't know, <laughs> but there'll be something. That's what Someone's we want to find out. Uh, so I'm keep... nearly did get killed. Fuck's sake, Fuck <laughs> <sake, come on. laughs> So keep your eyes Fuck peeled for the day of theirs with Tyrone, but uh, so... You joined, you actually had, you still had a good stint with Danny Vaughan. Um, we, we got on the con- golden contract, which was a mass. Probably the highlight of my career was me and you being in that golden contract. It was fucking yeah. exciting times. Um, it was just exciting. We were training together. 
and then, and then going to all like the open workouts and the, the Sky Sports and all the guys. It was a massive thing. It was fucking. I loved it. And then you got drew against Ryan Walsh, was it? Not in the first fight. It was that Mexican, and then. Oh, he near died. He near died. He near <laughs> died. <laughs> we, he was like he was trying to speak to his son. He still writes to me on Instagram, but they couldn't make a wait. And I think he oh, nearly you, died. I've never seen a so guy. Did you get a walk over? I know. I got a. Shit boy, right. <laughs> substituted him. Yeah, uh, I've never seen this guy as dead in my life. Like he was fucked, wasn't he? Collapsed in the river, and he still wanted to fight. And he was, he was, he was a lovely guy. It was. But he got beat. Or you beat him, and then uh, was it what's next? What's next? Uh... And uh just didn't go your way. He started off well. It, that's the last couple of rounds. What we've just been saying, first five rounds, I would say ten nine. I mean, you know, yeah. even Macklin commentating was saying, you know, it was going to get to the stage here where Walsh might need a knockout. Yeah. He didn't get the knockout, like, but he bit fuck out of me for the next <laughs> five <laughs> <laughs> No, he dropped me in a sick fan, and that was my first time getting dropped properly. I know yeah. Johan dropped me, but that mm. was just a flash knockdown, and I just went in the survival mode, yeah. and I just tried to see the fight out. You went the, in depressing mode after it. Uh, I literally couldn't talk to this guy for about 10 days. Uh, so I, I, would, I would text him to him all day, every day, and then after that defeat, Nothing. He didn't leave. He didn't go out. Like, what my, my big worry was the cunt wasn't drinking because because <laughs> they. Your big worry, I wasn't drinking. <laughs> yeah, because like normally after, something happened. after we fight or after we compete or even, I would still drink and he'd still go out and eat out and stuff like that. Yeah. Didn't hear nothing of no nah, no either. no one knew nothing of trouble color. He sat in his room. His dad was what eating. What were you doing? I was just drinking him. Well, I, I don't know if I was drinking him. I might have been just sitting in my room, depressed, crying. I don't think you were drinking. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, I remember you saying. Why did he take him so bad? Just because the just dead. The big first loss, like a uh, big yeah. opportunity. Like it and there, 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 the there opportunity. was rumors at the time it was a million pound contract. Yeah. that ends up being bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> shockingly enough. <laughs> but the guys who didn't win it ended up excelling. I know the guys who won it. What did they have? Like Tyrone went on well. Tyrone went on had some big nights. I'd say he's had much bigger fights than O'Hara, O'Hara has, O'Hara. and then look at Lee Wood Lee compared Wood. to Jazza. Yeah, mm, that's true. But you were really. led to believe that this, if you won this gold contract yeah. for life, yeah, that's why I was so good at when it when I you, it. you took your loss bad as well in the uh, final because I thought I'd won. Oh, you had won, and I, and I, I was just, I, 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 I just say you you thought it was this big million pound contract. You're getting same way top rank. Your your life's just gonna turn upside down. When you win it, so when I got robbed, not like, or when I fought, I got robbed anyway. You were robbed. I went, fuck me. I've just lost out in my yeah. life. Like, it's, yeah. li- like it's literally being one number away from the ladder or something. Yeah. And, uh, and I just went, fuck this. And I was proper depressed after that as well. But I remember you saying <coughs> that you didn't want to drink after that because you, you were so depressed. Uh, I would make me more depressed. You were scared, scared how uh, depressed you'd be, fucking. Mm. But, uh, nah. And then. You try to rebuild your career. We moved it. We moved. <laughs> we got sorry. We got chucked off. We got chucked off. Yeah, that was the original thing that I asked. What happened? Just get fucked up. I just Danny had enough of us to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we we were, <laughs> we were we were raging at the time, like because we just both of us were in the semi-finals. Uh, I, we, I had just probably one of my best performances of a boxing yeah. career against Mikey Saki. And I'm gonna. I'm going to say something aside with us in the whole split with Danny and then I'm going to, going to say something aside with Danny because we well, are a quarter-final one. It was me, Trangy. Yeah, uh, uh, 100%. Danny was away in... Where was away? Dubai. Mm. It wasn't there. It was me and Don Trangy practically for your yeah. quarter-final fight. <clears throat> I remember, I remember uh, us waking up in the morning going, what will today's session be in? Uh, we had to make our session me, that day. Me more or less telling them what they did. <laughs> That's weird. But uh, at the same time, like... Can't really blame him for telling us they beat it either. The mm. f- some of the stuff we got up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I don't, I'm not shocked. I, I think yeah. it should probably like, should have been earlier. <laughs> Apparently, when we were chucked off the team, then we uh walked on the Danny's change room because Danny was still teaching or still coaching Sean at the time. Mm, so we walked on right. not to be not to be paid or anything and wish Sean look and say, yeah. wish Sean luck and say, all right, to Danny. And apparently, Danny was getting reports throughout the whole, holy, the whole of Holy Town that we were just drinking all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Our room was in random gas. <laughs> <laughs> and this is before, like, Danny really fucked us off at this stage. Uh, he, uh, uh, yeah. he must have fought a great call, you know. I remember it was one time. Uh, he came in. I was fighting Lewis Benson. He came into our. Uh, me and him were, were staying over, 
And um, we were out the night before, blocked. Got it, got, it was somebody's day. Or no, it wasn't. I don't know what it was. But anyway, we were blocked. The room stank a drink. And uh, Danny Vaughn walked in. And then uh, said, here, train 11. Then closed the door. And I went, he spat that drink, didn't he? And uh, someone was like, nah, I don't know about that, I don't know about that. And I ran downstairs after him. I went, Dan, what's happening, blah, blah, blah. He's like, are you drinking? And I was like, hardly. I'm fighting a fucking tea week, you maniac. <laughs> and he's like, you stink a drink. And I said, I hardly fucking stink a drink. I'm fighting in three weeks. And, uh... Why did you say so again? That's fucking... Like, <laughs> got away from it. Why did you try and go well, back I again? Ch- I chased him to resolve it. I thought, I would get him and resolve. Fuck's sake. What, what he just smelt in our room. <laughs> just gave him a doubled waff of it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I... Can I make up with uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I didn't... I had to take the fall for that again. So you did? It was uh, you drinking? It wasn't me? <laughs> it was him drinking. I, I, sorry, I it wasn't me drinking. It was him drinking. I had to go into the gym next door and say, sorry, Danny, that was, uh, was, that was me drinking. Uh, Tyrone done drinking, Danny, and went through me for leading Tyrone astray. So it's <laughs> <so, so, laughs> a fight. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't see where the tell us for your own demise getting fucked up. Well, see when we got fucked out and we went over to Dublin, this is when... See, we had to get accommodation. Remember our first accommodation we had? Yeah, you, that you, was so we, we had to paint the guy. Fucking great mover, buzzing with. And we got a. a, a we actually we spoke on this in this. It's a. It's very podcast. But uh, we moved into the Jamie. I forget his second name. Jamie. Anyway, or something, is it? Or? No, no I, that's, a, that's your actor. What you think yeah. That's what I was Jamie thinking Dalton. of. Jamie Dalton. 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 Uh, so he's from the gym and he's like, here, lads, he's needed accommodation. My ma's uh, renting out a, a room in, a, in her house. Because a lot of people have doubled the offers, I mean. Because uh, I'm rent so high. Know. So we said, oh, 100%, we'll do that. That sounds great. But we're two freaks. Like, We've already spoke on it again, but we're speaking of Night of Trunks here because a lot of people said this was a bullshit story, which is not. So we're such freaks. We moved into this place and the woman was sound as fuck, but we were so weird that uh, we, we didn't want to converse. We were just wanted to fucking write hello and go to the room. So we, we every kept on saying hello, going in the room and not, not uh, going out of the room until training session. And our room was a bottom floor and you could open the window when you get out in the street. So, uh, Every day, say we got the second session. After the second session, we'd be sitting in the hotel or the room, and uh, we say, "Fuck all, go to the bar." But the reason we were going to the bar is so we didn't have to speak to your girl, but we didn't uh. want the awkward conversation. <laughs> so we would have went to the bar from after the second session till bedtime. Freaks. Yeah, yeah. But there was a flaw in our plan then, mm. because when we got home from the bar, we needed to pass all Test night. Like, <laughs> all night. Like, we used to go to this bar. We didn't like the, the toilet was upstairs where her bedroom was. We were downstairs. We don't like to talk to people. Didn't want to be disturbing her. Disturbing her. Like she's she's a hard worker. She was, I think she was a nurse, wasn't she? Something like that. Uh, so she was up early. Like we didn't want to be racking her sleep pattern. So we used to, if we need to go to piss, climb out the window, go to the bar. One of us go to piss and then we'll have a few pints and we'll go back up. But that's what happened. That's what happened. I'm not joking. That's what happened all night because. <laughs> once you once you once you piss once when you're drinking, you need to piss like fuck. Know. So we were going to the bar like fuck to go to the piss and have a few pints, and then this is on. And we get to the nighttime stage, and we'd have bottles of water everywhere. <laughs> we we just piss in these bottles all night, and then in the morning get up, climb out the window. Pour the fucking Fuck bottles of piss down the fucking the uh, Like our neighbours must have been looking out the window and seeing <laughs> us know. emptying bottles of piss down the <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember I already spoke on her, but she thought we were nuts. But that's the like we even we stayed in our place, what was called uh Hey Mark? Oh uh, the apartments. Hey day, hey day, And it was apartments for students as well and it was COVID time, so the place oh, was empty. It was, it was completely empty. We had this fucking unbelievable place for fucking. It was there enough, actually, to be honest. It was for Dublin, it was cheap, but it was yeah, there. It was, it was about 300 euro each a month, um, wasn't it? Yeah, so Dublin, I remember the unions coming down, and I had left the camp about. It's probably about eight or nine months before you joined Dublin. Maybe mm. it was a year. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, when mm. I was leaving, my previous camp, I went out and spoke to a culture. I was like, I'm swapping my 
base to Dublin. I need to get out of Belfast. I need to get away from my mates. You know, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be focused. You know, away from no, all the no distractions. distractions. <laughs> the next thing we're fucking two bad saints called out there. He's full of shit, that we love. Do you know what ruined Dublin for me was COVID? Like, see all our other awesome. camps. We were in camps in Marbella, we were in camps in Liverpool and, and Scotland and all. You had a lot of freedom during the day to go do stuff. Go to a bar. And then... Bars all closed. <laughs> <laughs> but then, see, in Dublin, everyone was closed. You literally were sitting in one room. Aww. We were sitting in a hotel room all day. And I was fucking driving us insane. Oh, I used to drive me insane when I used to come, come down with us. And this one talk. <laughs> I remember, because we were having fights in different dates. So the camps were, at the start were can't, weren't overlapping. And then when we were fighting around the same date, I remember going down, I I said to my wife, I was like, I don't think the Toronto's like me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happened, but it must be fell out. <laughs> <laughs> These two just sitting there on the phone, like, uh, not the, talking, and I was trying to talk, make conversation. The, the, the COVID like, oh. was killing us. Mm. And then Toronto used to just bounce up and go, not even say where he was going, just bounce some stick of shoes on and go to walk in. And I go, Tom, where are you going? The shop. I was like, Shall I come with you? This <laughs> is so like weird because you know, if you're in a group of people go, hang on this shop, do you, do you wanna go? Or like our whole life on team was like, do you wanna go to this shop? Or do you wanna do I something? Know, He's always said it. This time he was just like, he hated you, Tommy. And you too. <laughs> it's because he never wants to go to shop, so I just got conditioned to not ask him. I was like, yeah. right, I'm going to shop here. He, he, he hates doing any walking outside of Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> That's just conditioned right, I'm going yeah. to shop here. But, well, uh, see, at, like, I like Dublin and uh, I love the training, but see, at hotel, that just depressed. It sucked the life out of me just sitting in that room. Did it kill me? Killed. Um, I loved him. Did he? <laughs> Just because you go training and just lie here or there's nothing to do no, and they go back. I, just... I need to go for coffees or something or get out. Nah, out of what, do you your fa- what was your favourite camp you had? What was your favourite like place you were uh, trained in? Liverpool, I think, you know. Liverpool? Uh, Liverpool is lethal. I have just... I had the, the blessings of Marbella, so I'm uh, always going to say Marbella. Marbella. Well, yeah, but like, think. why <laughs> did... Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to touch this here. We always would have... Like put on a serious camp and then fucked it about two like yours always before, about three weeks before always we to fight. what was that about because Bar- my mate Bar- your mate as well Barry Fats was just talking to me and he's like I have photos of uh, McKenna three weeks before Catterall used to out in Liverpool and then it happened every time like we would have we would have done a proper camp and went off drink and then somehow messed it mm. up a week before it's like we wanted a reason to I, mess up I know Dublin was Dublin was hard training there was a hard training going on Dublin we trained like fuck probably, probably the hardest we did train because there's fuck all else to do and then uh, you were coming for your last fight was coming off the back of a loss was it Brian or did you have a fight Ryan Walsh no Ryan Walsh was the uh, second last fight and uh, so you were getting your you were trying to get a fight to get back on the uh, on the on the map and what happened Covid happened first of all and I had about three fights pushed back you know got the fight week uh, the main shows just kept getting cancelled yeah. the last week or uh, Cancelled, got the fight week cancelled, and then. Sounds like me my last face. I was, I just got sick and tired, and I, I was messing about about. I was still training, but I was messing about, and then Jamie rang me and said I was sort of fighting up two weeks' notice. I was my, my weight was down and all, so like happy days. No, no excuses, like, but it was against this journeyman, Red Fiddle. Everyone's beat him, and I was like handy enough one. I don't know if it is handy, but no, and it wasn't handy because me and Paddy had spoke on it years before, and Paddy was like, "That's one journey, man, and everyone if I see we Brett." And I was like, I, "It's tough enough." Because the see, the thing is, over the years, journeymen are actually good boxers. They're not. They yeah, can be see, good you, have, you, you have see, to know your way around the ring to yeah. be a journeyman. I, you see people with six wins, eighty losses, but look at most times he's been stopped because he knows yeah. how to work away as well in the ring. You have to. You actually have to be good, a good level to be a journeyman. Right. But they just take the losses. But any given moment, they can make they a can win. Turn it on, they can yeah. take a win. Uh, so. so, I was due to fight Brett, Brett Fiddle and it was a four, there was just a foregone conclusion. I should have won or was yeah. I won. Pretty confident. You remember you sent me before you were like, I'm nervous as fuck. I was like, I, I and you a, look nervous. I had a feeling since that fight was announced that something bad was going to happen since the man it was announced. Remember, it was meant to be someone else. Yeah. Because I didn't fancy that one yeah. for my first fight back. I'd take this one. 
and I just had a bad feeling. And, uh, and you can't even say nah, I don't want to fight him because 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 he's so a journeyman. You can't say nah, I want something easier. <laughs> so you feel like a dick if you do. And then won the first two rounds handy, and he hurt me in the third, knocked me down. And I, I genuinely. You see, when he knocked me down, this was a fast going through my head. I was like, this is fucking bad that he's knocked me down. I was like, right, just get up now and, you know, see the rest of the fight out. You know, it'll be a 10 8 round. I won the last round, I won the fight. Yeah. Because I won the first two. And the referee waved it off, and I was like, I was getting ready to crack up. And then I just thought, you know what? If Bedford was putting you down, like, that's mm, it. Since it's yeah. the first, uh, yeah. the first time your girl came to watch yeah. too. Oh, no, and I'd been slagging all day, slagging her. Yeah. And we, 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 were, we, we were slagging and about like, it. That's the thing. We were because it, it was so. <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were so confident that he was going to win. We were slagging you the whole day. Mm. And then, even during the fight, the first round, went around, I wasn't really paying overly attention because you were handling them so easy. And I just looking down with my phone, looking up. Second round, same thing. Easy, handy win. Third round, looking at my phone, look up, McCall's down. What the yeah. fuck is going on? And then he jumped out of the ring, just looked at me, up, that'll do it. Nah, uh, that's the first. Uh, just looked at him straight after I got beaten and says, no, well, that's it. Yeah, that's, embar- that's embarrassing with that Melissa. Mm. But I just thought if he's putting me down and I'm going fucking toady toady yeah. during my look, look, look him, day. Looking back now on your retirement and whatnot, are you happy with how your pro career went or? Would you have thought it would have been better when you when you did turn pro or what? No, I'm actually happy enough with how my professional career went because, like I says, I don't know if I overachieved as a professional, but I won a WBO European, I headlined the uh, Titanic, mm. I fought in Sky Sports, I fought in BT Sports, you know, I done, what you know, was? headlined a few shows. Yeah. I done, I done enough, I think. And yeah. you know, I got, I got the big fight fields. You know, I fought in Odyssey by Joe Ham, I fought in. Yeah. Sky Sports against Ryan Walsh, you know, I had the big, the big fight. Maybe not to your level or Tommy's level, but I'm happy enough and I don't think I could have went much further anyway. Mm. Probably the one thing that it's a regret that I have for you is you not getting the world title, sure. which was there. That was, again, I think that was offered at one stage, wasn't it, Tyrone? Yeah. A world title fight, but Danny knocked it back. Thought yeah. I wasn't ready. I got it. It's a melt that I can knock back. That's the one thing. Yeah, it would frustrate me. That there was an opportunity for fit, to fight Navarati and it didn't happen. That was probably good because... Yeah, you're going to get killed. Death. But... <laughs> death. <laughs> yeah, they killed But me. do you know what I wanted to touch on? It's not boxing related. Is uh, there was a big podcast out a few... About a year ago, a year and a half ago. Two Johnnies. Lethal podcasters. Love them. And... uh Started two Johnnies. They brought up a story of them getting catfished about... Who what was the name? Uh, the wee girl that done it was called Neve Farrell, I think. Uh, so That's I, a legit I, name. I, it's sent about, name. It's uh, got it's got sent, sent about everywhere. And uh Trump calls in it, Trump calls in it. I clicked on it. It was fucking an insane story. And I remember the day that if you go on and watch the two stories, G A Catfish. G A Catfish, uh, uh, this is in it and Trump gets a mansion. I, um, so what happened? What happened with your? This, this, it was these girls or yeah, these girls were catfishing the two Johnnies or one of the Johnnies, and um, the fizzled out, and he, she was scooped and blah blah, and he put her on blast on the the podcast. But he found out that he was doing catfishing a lot of people, a lot of famous people, and you were one of them. Yeah. So, what was your catfishing? It's insane because it happened. Like, people kept sending me this podcast to the two Johnnies. And mm. saying, did you listen to that? Did you listen to that? And I was like, why is everyone fucking saying me us? Or why is a few people sent me it? And then I listened and I was like, that's that's her. Because I was catfished about, this is the mad bit, it was about 10 years ago. Mm. And I, I remember like, it. She's still, she's <laughs> still doing that. I was like, that is like, I guess it's the worrying bit because the gear must actually be Mental. mentally <laughs> unwell. Be, like, to be doing it for that long with so many people, I couldn't believe it. See, like, if any of the listener, any of your listeners have listened to the, the two G-A catfish yeah. they'll understand it's but a two parter the length that this girl went to the catfish people is unbelievable Unreal. but this have was respect. this was years you do have to respect you really do <laughs> this was years ago with me social media wasn't that big well it was 10 years ago it was Facebook at the time and a scare called Brittany started writing to me and fucking great like I was like came on yeah came on, <laughs> yeah, <came> on. <laughs> <laughs> and things were going well and Brittany bitch uh 
talking about meeting up, talking about meeting up. Went for a meet up. She called it off. Went for an hour one. She called it off. Went for so uh, hold on. Where are you? Where is meeting? It isn't like it isn't like I'm there and waiting for dinner and she doesn't show up. You know, it's like something happens on the day, like uh, oh, her granny died or her granny seemed to have died off. She must have about twenty. <laughs> But this happened three or four times in a row, so I started to get a bit suspicious then. But weird things were happening there. My, my brother's funeral, some of them showed up. Uh, that's, what, that's what happened in the two Johnnies he said about... I remember being at the funeral, and you'd have said, you'd have said about Brittany and, and whatever her name is. And I'm sitting there having a paint at your brother's funeral. And it's a fucking funeral. At the end of the day, it's a funeral. Brother died very young. R.I.P. R.I.P. Red Dean. Machine. And... Uh, <laughs> It lies in the man, and we're at we're at the the funeral. And we're having paints. It's a fucking funeral, very serious fucking thing. Next thing I turn around, and these two they look very young. What they? they look oh, very, they young. very young. They, very young. they look about. They were obviously about eighteen, nineteen, but I'd say they, look younger, they looked about yeah. fucking fifteen. They, they burst in two of them, head to toe, and G A kids, G A kids at a funeral, like, at a funeral kit, at a, a full kit wankers at a funeral. And I, I went, what the fuck is I going know. on here? And Tr- Trump was fuming, he had to chuck him out. Uh, my head was too far up my hole to even yeah. care that much, but it's just, will you leave, please? Yeah. It was mad though. What, what, what kit was it? <laughs> 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 Where do you care what kid is? Probably Monaghan, I think I think I Randomly enough. What kid is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like I said, the local club or the county kid. Was it the local? <laughs> like, like I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing it justice with the lengths that this guy went. I don't, I don't want to advertise on our podcast, but you need to listen to the GAA catfish and the two no, guys. Do you understand yeah. what they... They, what she'd done like and what what happened after the, what the happened funeral what happened, what happened what was the end result I think I, I just sent her a Facebook message and called her a fucking but did you know did you know Neve as well as Brittany at the same time or did oh like, well, yeah yeah no Neve was Brittany's best mate oh, oh right, right. Right, right so or let on to be but so she was going to Brittany Ray really likes you uh, but she has this girl Neve has about 10 or names and aliases and oh, really? like that's metal like it must take up our whole time I, the dedication to it's have you got a <laughs> <laughs> we get her on the podcast that would be a good should try get her on oh it'd be brilliant yeah. we should get her on the first podcast. day of the story Maybe Watson, we want to hear <laughs> yes it. we want Eve on get all 12 of them on <laughs> 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 we need a bigger room <laughs> uh, that's genius well, to get her on Thank you. we're getting her on we're getting her on yeah her side of that story. <laughs> but uh Tarum was cat facing her. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one day I wanted to get this on the story, because we can't have a trauma call episode without mentioning it. Remember the time you got beat by Ryan uh Limburg and you text him, Oh look, he made a uh, gutter for you and he texts back. I just got out of the shower and looked at myself in the mirror. I'm happy again. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah, we all know you got a big piece. <laughs> no, I don't think that was it. <laughs> yeah, was it? What was it, Tommy? No, You're bad about it. We I, I remember us, we were on Thompson's once, and uh, the guy passing on the middle of the urinal, and I was passing his right, and Tommy's passing his left. <laughs> we were all sitting there, and Tommy nudged him. Mate, if you ever want to feel good about yourself again, do not. Look to your right. <laughs> look to your right. <laughs> uh, we were at the World Championship and you had you won the fight to get in the quarterfinals, but you broke your hand, remember? Uh, so we, me and you were doing a bit of training because he's the way in. And then in the mm-hmm. amateurs, every fight you, you have, you the way in before. So we're doing a wee weight loss size and then this big hull. So our own finished training. He was drying himself off with a towel, but he had a broken hand, so he couldn't hold it. And his wee towel slipped and he tried to grab it quickly. And then the cops was just turned around looking at each other. And then, did you see that, dude? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like a fucking donkey. <laughs> no wonder he's so awkward. I know, I know. <laughs> so I was like, no, no one knows you with all the races. He has three fucking legs. <laughs> well, listen, Trump, thank you for coming on. You're alive. We're wrapping it up. Yeah. Can we get on it? Uh, yes, exactly. We're getting on the, the drink now. Oh, what have yeah. been drinking? But the Garrick. You're, very late, yeah. you're, you're going. Yeah. We're going to the Garrick for... Because it's the best bar on the road. But anyway, get on Patreon. It's two quid a month. 
We're going to do a few Patreons this week. It's going to be action packed. Also, the live. We have a massive show coming up, 29th of December, in the Davenies. Huge guests. It's going to be an unbelievable action packed night. The tickets are flying out. So get on my social media or Toronto social media. The links are free to get tickets, only 15 quid. The perfect me in between her. You know the interim stages between Christmas and the New Year's? Mm. The 29th of December, Friday night, come down. It's more or less just a drinking, harmless fun, fun. It's a drinking week. Like, yeah. Well, no one does that like, drinking that week. People be going mad drinking. At least you come down, have a wee sit, cup of beer, does he? And, you know and get entertained. And you know what? The tickets are so cheap. They're like a gooby, like secret Santa kind of thing. Like, oh, hey, what am I going to get? This guy he works for me. He likes whiskey mate. Everyone likes whiskey mate. Give him a few tickets. Boom. Yep. Happy so days. We're looking forward to seeing you all there. Yep. And uh, like, subscribe, share. Tell your mom and tell your father, tell your brother, tell your sister. Yep. And uh, join us next week. Boom. Peace.